All right, so in the last few videos, I've showed you how to set up a red dot, muzzle device, and a vertical grip. Now we're going to basically cover the last part and set up the magnified scope. So I'm going to show you how to set these up. It's because these are a little bit different. So let's just jump right into it. So I'm going to grab that name of the static mesh really quick. And we're going to create, again, a new Blueprint class. This one's going to be search for FPS template the magnified RT base. So if we click select, give it the name of BP underscore tutorial scope, open that on up, add a static mesh component to it, and that mesh is going to be, again, the scope itself. We can hit compile and save. Let's head over to it. Though this is not super ideal for this concept, or this, because if you have the actual glass itself has a bevel to it around the edges, and that's going to cause a little bit of distortion, but it should be enough to get you going. And here in a bit, I'll also show you how you can kind of fix... Eh, I don't know. But we'll just have to kind of see. But anyways, let's go ahead and continue setting this up. So basically, we want the scene component, or the capture component, to be fitted right in the dead center of where we want the reticle to be. So what I'm going to do is click on the static mesh, we're going to change the element 0, which is going to be our reticle, to again be that set sight socket, so that way we have a dot right in the dead center. And that will allow us to move the scene capture component around and get it as close as we can right there to that dot. And then we can drag it farther forwards just a little bit. Okay. Once we have that, what we're going to do is we can head over to the defaults, and we want to set one of the reticles. So let's add a reticle. And for now, I'm just going to do the ATARC. So that'll be this guy. It's the one through eight. And then magnifications, I'm just leaving out one. I don't care if it zooms in at all or not. Okay. Now, once we have that, click on our scene capture. Just to confirm, let's go to our texture target. And we're going to set RT underscore magnified scope. So that way we're using the right render target. Now we just need to set up a socket to, of which we can aim with. So let's go ahead and load up the mesh. And just like all the other ones, we create a socket of S underscore aim, unless you want to change the name. Here we're going to change the lens to be that set sight offset, or sight socket. And we drag our sight to be right in the dead center of it. So just like that, around in there. I'll go ahead and put the lens back on it and save it. So this should be already straight as it is. And let's go back over here. So let's confirm that that name is correct. So aim socket is S underscore aim. And our socket is S underscore aim. So now let's add it to our M4. So here we have our part component. Let's do the SM underscore scope to be the X. And that's where that's going to sit. The only problem possibly being... We'll just see. I want to move it up the time being just for testing. Make sure that's not going to be messing with anything. Same thing, the front sight's not in the way. And we're going to change this to be the tutorial scope. Okay. Tutorial scope and tutorial scope for the possible part and the default part. Let's hit play. And it's got collision. So let's disable the collision. So click on our static mesh. Go down here from where it says block all dynamic and set it to just no collision. And I don't remember if I added the tag, which I forgot. So click on the static mesh one more time. Go to component tags and add a tag of FPS part. Just so it knows which part it is using. Okay, so now we aim and there we go. So we have some problems. What in the world is with the outside? You might be wondering. Well reason for that is because of our element that we have selected. So we click back here and go back down to reticles. Here you can see the reticle material index. I have that set to 1. But if we click on the mesh, you can see here element 0, that's the glass, like where the reticle would be. And element 1 is the actual scope. So we want to change this from 1 to 0. So that way it uses the actual reticle glass. And you want to make sure that that lines up with whatever mesh you are actually using. So now let's try to aim. And there we go. So now have a magnified optic. 
So just out of curiosity, I'm going to bring it back down to see if it's okay. I see the front sight a bit. Uh, well, you do in some situations. So I'll drag it up just a little bit to get it out of the way because I don't want it in the view. And that's okay. Okay, so now we can go through and change some of the settings. So starting from the very top, so what is the refresh rate? So this is used for a couple of things. The main one being it is a giant help to performance. Render targets in their nature are very expensive. However, I firmly believe the way I have my render target scope set up, they are the lightest on the market currently. So this is one of the options I use to control the performance. So the lower it is, the more laggy it'll be, but the, the more like the less of a performance hit you will get. And this is also, I use this for things like thermals. So just like how Escape from Tarkov has the thermal optics, those thermal optics are very laggy. Like they have a very low refresh rate on them. That I am also doing in here. So if you change this to like five, this will be updating at five times a second. So as you can see, it is very laggy. It's kind of similar to that of the thermals. Granted, that was way worse than, or sorry, like to the thermals of Escape from Tarkov. So next up, we have magnifications. So here you can have an array of magnifications that you can go between. So basically, I have it at one power. I'll set the next one at four power. And then the next one after that at eight power. So the way we have to do this is we have to set it up so where we can zoom in and out. So I'm going to grab this little section here and change B to scroll wheel. Let's do mouse wheel. Do mouse wheel up. So I scroll up and then I want to zoom my optic. So this is using an interface, not a direct call. So we can use either one of these. So we're going to call zoom optic and we're going to check zoom to be true. I'm going to do the same thing except uncheck zoom and change this one to mouse wheel down. Like that. So let's click it, save. And now when we aim, as you can see, I can zoom in, where's the corner, and out. Actually, I'll just look at this guy, zoom in, and zoom out. So you can go between the range that you set here. So we're going from 1 power to 4 power to 8 power, and then back to 4 power, then 1 power. So the next option is, is first focal plane. So I've added in support for second and first focal plane. By default, it is going to be second focal plane. So basically, what that means is, if you look at the reticle, as I zoom in, the reticle itself stays the same. It does not scale with size. So that's second focal plane. You'll usually find those on cheaper optics. And basically, it screws with your, what do you call it? You can't really use your hash marks, your mill dots with it unless you have it set to a fixed power that the optic says to use. So like, for example, in my Vortex, 6.5 through 20. That one I have to set, I believe it's at 16 power for me to actually properly use my reticle to compensate for things like drop and wind. So that's what that is. If you check this to where it's now a first focal plane optic and we look at the reticle, you can see the reticle gets bigger and smaller. So it actually scales with your magnification. So the more you zoom in, the smaller, or sorry, the bigger your reticle will get. When you zoom out, your reticle will get smaller. So it scales with it. So you can use your reticle, like your mill dots, hash marks, whatever, at any magnification, and they will be accurate. So that's the purpose of that. Next up is disable while not aiming. So this is another performance measure. So basically what this is, is when you're not aiming, so like right now, nothing's happening. So if I look at the red dot, it's not doing anything because I'm not aiming with it. Then when I aim, it starts working. Or sorry, the scope. So basically when you're not aiming, it's not using up any extra resources. But when you start aiming, that's when it does. So it's just another performance measure. So if you uncheck this, what you can do is set the not aiming refresh rate. So I'll have it set to like five. So now I'm aiming, it's going, if I go out, you can see it is still updating just very, very slowly. So that's if you wanted to keep it going. So again, another performance measure in place. So when this is checked, it is not going to refresh, 
basically what you can do is you can clear it out the scope with color or a material. So right now it's set to clear with a color, and that color is black. So let me change this to something like blue, and hit play. So I aim, everything's fine, I unaim. You can see it is now cleared with a blue lens. So that, I like leaving it black. It just looks the most correct, because it works with my scope shadow. Next up is clear scope with material. So what material would we want to use? We can use the default lens material that comes with it. So compile save. Let's aim, everything's fine, unaim. You can see we're now having glass. So it clears it out and replaces it with a material. And again, this is all done locally, so it is only on your client, not for other people's. I like leaving color. It's just simple, doesn't do anything extra fancy. So, and then you have all of these settings. So for magnified optics, I recommend using a fixed camera distance and finding one that looks good for you. So let's start with that. So zero, that's right where I would be. I'm not getting any scope shadow. I can move it back farther. So let's do negative five. And here you can see I'm just now starting to get scope shadow. So I'm just far enough away. You can see I get some shadow to it. So I move around, you can see the shadow effect working with it. All right, so I'll leave that back at like negative, actually I kind of like zero, that looked pretty good. Uh, same thing, reticle and reticle brightness, those were covered in the red dot video. Everything else here is the same as in results to the red dot. So the only thing, actually I think I forgot to cover these, uh, the aim interpolation multiplier. So this is at 50. I set this to one, you can see that's how fast we're going. I set this to, let's do 500. Oh wait, never mind. I apologize. This is for a uh, holding optics. I got myself backwards, so it's not going to change anything. That's related to, purely to your firearm. So ignore that. Uh, this will be in a separate video. That pretty much sums it up. That's everything you need to know about magnified optics. And in the next video, I will cover their material. So I will see you then.